satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. We run out of bulletins, so we will announce the hymns. Please stand 582. 582 in the red hymn. Gracious God, we ask for your blessing as we listen to the words of the scriptures. May they touch our hearts and lead us to a life of love, mercy, and service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God appointed for St. Matthew's Day from Ezekiel chapter 2. But you, mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouths and eat what I give you. I looked and a hand was stretched out to me and a written scroll was in it. He spread it out before me. It had writing on the front and on the back, and written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. And he said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. And he said, Mortal, eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. And he said to me, Mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. For you are not sent to a people of obscure speech and difficult language, but to the house of Israel not to many peoples of obscure speech and difficult language whose words you cannot understand. Surely if I sent you to them, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, for they are not willing to listen to me. 
because all the house of Israel will have a hard forehead and a stubborn heart. See, I have made your face hard against their faces, and your forehead hard against their foreheads. Like the hardest stone, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not fear them, or be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And he said to me, Mortal, all my words that I shall speak to you, receive in your heart, and hear with your ears. Then go to the exiles, to your people, and speak to them, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear. The word of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the joys of living at Trinity Seminary in Columbus, Ohio this fall semester is to be able to walk two blocks to a fine arts theater. We've recently seen the movie Calvary twice. I offer a few comments about this impressive film as a way of introducing the Ezekiel text. Father James, the leading character in the film, pursues a pastoral ministry in his Irish world. He struggles with being a part of a church whose leaders often do not embody that word. They are called upon to, that they're called upon to preach, evident especially in sexual misconduct. At the beginning of the movie, we overhear Father James listening in the confessional booth to a parishioner who speaks of having repeatedly been the victim of sexual misconduct as a child by an unnamed pastor, now dead. And then, ironically, this parishioner warns that for the misconduct of that pastor, Father James would be killed in a week's time. And the film takes us day by day, through the following week. Toward the end of the week and the movie, Reverend James experiences his Gethsemane. Having decided to fly away from the area, he changes his mind, leaves the airport, and goes back into the reality of his own community even though it meant possible, even probable, death. He didn't have to return home, but some word of God, deep within him, sent him back to embody that word in his home situation. He had no idea whether this move would make any difference, finally, but he had to return to his parishioners, every one of whom is imaged in this film as bearing the wounds of abuse of of some sort. In spite of the risk involved, he discerned that his embodiment of the word of God in that familiar world would make a difference. At the end of the movie, confronted on the beach by the one who had experienced ongoing abuse, Father James recalls the death of his pet dog, whose throat had been slashed. He confesses that he wept over his pet's death. But in a remarkable admission to a question asked by his killer-to-be, he confesses that he did not weep over the suffering of the abused children. He said that he was detached. That reality didn't affect him personally. 
And in response, he was shot to death by the abused one. Even the best of those who embody the Word of God in this world are often detached from situations of abuse and suffer the consequences. So everyone, be alert. As I hear <clears throat> lay persons speak about their expectations for their leaders, what I hear most often is that they value a minister's way of being in their midst. The fruits of the Spirit are powerful realities for these faith folks and deeply shape the effectiveness of ministry for them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Some of these traits were deeply characteristic of Father James in this movie, Calvary. And finally, for these fruits of the Spirit, he was put to death. We're living in a time when the reputation of the church in our culture is sharply negative, and one wonders why. At times, we may think in too narrow a way about our role as servants of the Word of God. We may think that we are only called to speak that word, to preach the gospel, proclaim Jesus Christ crucified. All else is vanity and a striving after wind. Or from another angle, we may feel called to be so many things to the increasingly diverse world in which we live that we don't know where to begin. The call and ministry of Ezekiel, however, would remind us that to be a servant of the word is not simply to speak. It is also to be a certain kind of person in the midst of the community so that the people will not only hear but will also see, indeed experience, the Word of God embodied among them. <clears throat> the problem with Ezekiel's audience is that they will not listen. Hear God's Word to Ezekiel in chapter 33. And they come to you as people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear what you say, but they will not do it. Lo, you are to them like one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice, for they hear what you say, but they will not do it. Ezekiel's people hear all right, but the speaking gets through only as beautiful words. He's such a good speaker. Doesn't she tell wonderful stories? Good speech, Pastor. You will be like one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice, hearing but not listening, ears to hear, but nothing gets through. Preach anyway, God says, whether they listen or not, and don't be afraid, though they have thick skulls and stubborn hearts, keep the word coming, don't stop speaking. That responsibility is crucial, but there's more to say. We find Ezekiel and other prophets not only speaking, but also giving the word a certain shape in their daily lives through symbolic acts of various kinds, through their way of being in their communities. Note that God does not speak to Ezekiel the words he is to proclaim. God gives him a scroll with words written on it and commands Ezekiel to eat it and digest it. The Word of God 
becomes enfleshed in his very person. You are what you eat. (laughs) Even if Israel cannot hear the words spoken, they might be able to take the words into themselves through other channels of experience. And what are the words that Ezekiel is to speak and to embody in the midst of this people? Words of lamentation and mourning and woe. These are the kinds of words that God has written on the scroll that Ezekiel eats. And as such, he takes into himself God's own cries and God's own laments. Over what? Over the shape that the lives of God's people have taken, not least their way of being with others. This word of God's lamentation and mourning and woe is to be conveyed to the people, both in what the prophet says and the way that word is embodied in his daily life. This is the word of a God who is deeply wounded because of the lives of these people and the brokenness of the relationship. This is the word of God who also grieves in anticipation of what will happen to this people. This is the word of a God who takes the road of vulnerability and suffering all the way to Calvary for the sake of their future. And it is because of what this kind of God has done for you and the word that you have taken deeply into yourself that you can dare to venture out on a comparable road. The word you bring may well have to get through to people by channels other than their ears. You may have to work on their eyes, on the larger range of their experience, so that they can see the word of God in and through your way of being in the community. You, yourself, have taken the Word of God deeply into your life through a variety of channels. You have even, at times, eaten it. And you are called to speak that Word and to show it forth in the shape your daily life will take. We are grateful that God did not send us just words, but sent that word in flesh, unsurpassably, in Jesus Christ. That word of lamentation and mourning and woe embodied all the way to death on Calvary. This word is powerfully able to convey the length, depth, and breadth of God's love for you and to bring the word of forgiveness deeply within your very being. You are more than the mouthpiece of God. You are the body of Christ called to embody that word in the midst of others and to encourage that calling among them. And it may very well be that in and through the person you are, that the word of God will be able to get through to others, even if it takes the form of a Calvary. And may our gratitude to God take the shape of lives that bespeak more than our words can convey. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, give us grace to set a good example to all among whom we live, to be just and true in all our dealings, to be conscientious in a discharge of every duty, pure and temperate in all enjoyment, gracious and generous and courteous toward all, so that the mind of Jesus Christ may be formed in us and all may know that we are his disciples, in whose name we pray. Amen. The closing hymn is 335. 335, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Mm -hmm.
And now, God Almighty, send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. The holy angels accompany you. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stay where you are, stretch for a few minutes, and we're going to set up the table for the panel, and then you're going to hear from Terry Walter and